Hi and welcome to this video in which I want to introduce you to the new version 3.2.1 of Sonic Pi running on a Raspberry Pi 4 under Raspbian. Um, this is a copy of Raspbian more or less as it comes uh, from the um, distribution when you first download it except that I've added a, an extra program called Screen Recorder to it which I'm using to record the screen which is running. And in order to get the sound for this, I'm using uh, a little program called Jack Audio Connection Kit, which actually comes uh, pre-installed on uh, Sonic Pi, although it's not usually visible. Um, it's actually on the sound menu here, the top program here. And in fact, that is enabled if you go to the Preferences menu and to the Main Menu Editor. When that comes up, if you go to the sound section then normally when you come here um, you've got um, QJack CTL there but the icon for it is not visible on the menu because it's switched off here. All you have to do is to click it on there to say OK and that's the case. Uh, there's a, another um, program there called QSynth which I'm not using in this particular video but which I will use in a, a subsequent one in what I hope will be a series. So there we are, that's running and you can see down here that we've got the microphone which is coming uh, into uh, the system. I've got a USB microphone plugged into the um, Pi and that is connected to the sound input of simple uh, screen recorder which is why you can hear me at the moment. The reason I'm doing it this way is that Sonic Pi also uses um, a program called Jack in order to connect its sound into the system and because we've got to connect it into Simple Recorder as well we have to actually run up this program Jack Audio Connection Kit to do that. Uh, in normal use for Sonic Pi uh, this will all happen automatically and you don't need to have this program running. It's only because of the additional feature of this screen recorder that I'm having to use it at present. So how do we actually do this? Well, I've uh, Sam Aaron is just uh, released version uh, 3.2.1 and uh, he's uh, 3.2 for um, the Mac and for the PC and he already has a beta release of 3.2.1 which is what I'm running here and as soon as the full release version of 3.2.1 becomes available then I will make this um, mechanism for installing it on Sonic Pi um, for um, available <coughs> and it simply comes down to a file here uh, which is Sonic Pi 3.2.1 underscore 1 ARM HF that's just the ARM processor that we're going to use and then dot DEB and that's a deb file which is the normal way that packages are distributed um, on uh, <coughs> Raspbian. Uh, the only difference is that this is uh, what's called a binary package. It doesn't have a, a source package associated with it and it also installs in a slightly non-standard way uh, rather like the previous version 3.0.1 that used to be available on the Scratch distribution um, a couple of years ago. Um, this installs the whole program for those who are technically minded in the program slash opt on the uh, SD card um, rather than in the normal distribution of the various bits um, on a, a Linux distribution. Uh, be that as it may, it works okay, it doesn't interfere with things and as I'll show you it's easy to install and uninstall if you don't like it. So at the moment we've just got the pre-installed Sonic Pi which is actually version 3.1 that comes with um, the, the Raspberry distribution but unfortunately that is not fully featured. It doesn't uh, support MIDI commands and it doesn't support OSC commands. It also has one or two bugs in it and also um, the version 3.2.1 introduces one or two extra features which are well worth having. So for this reason uh, I've produced this uh, deb file. So let's see how it goes. It will coexist quite happily with the existing one and can uh, be installed alongside it. And to install it, we simply come up to the file and double click on it. Click, click, and um, I think it missed that actually. Click, click, that's better. Double click on it and it comes up and asks if I want to install it. Well, I do, so I click on install. Um, it will then ask me for the um, 
password for the user on uh, this machine. Rather slow typing, I'm afraid, because I'm holding the microphone with one hand and I'm typing one one handed on that. But there we go, we've got the password in. Have I correctly got it there, which I have? <coughs> it's then starting to download the package for Sonic Pi. Not just the package itself, but it calls up one or two supporting packages which are automatically downloaded and installed. <coughs> so you do need to have an internet connection running uh, while you're doing this installation, as, as is indeed the case with most... Um, packages on um, from Raspbian because uh, they're downloaded from usually from the external server but in this case it's coming from a local file but the extra bits are coming from the main server. So uh, once it's downloaded them it has then to initialize the various packages that are there and it runs a little um, post installation script and that's the whole thing installed. So I think you'll agree it's pretty easy to do. Uh, if you can double click and you can type in a password that's all you need to do. And if we now come and look at the uh, main menu, at the programming section, then not only do we have the original Sonic Pi there, but we also have a new one, Sonic Pi 3.2.1. I've deliberately given it a different name so there's no confusion as to which one you're using. And if you want, you can uninstall the original, which you won't need, because once you've seen this going, you'll, you'll, you'll find it much preferable. Or if you'd rather leave it there and leave things as they are, um, one way you can do it is to go back to the main menu editor in Preferences. And if you go to the main menu editor, and then once that comes up, hopefully, I think I must have missed it. Let's just try again. Uh, main menu editor. That's right, it's come up this time. Um, if you go to the um, programming section, as we've just seen for the CTL, QCTL program, we can simply come down here and remove that tick there, and that will leave the program uh, there, but it won't actually be visible. If we go to the menu now, we can't actually get at it from the menu. It is actually on the machine, and you could reverse that process if you want to get it back again. So that's Sonic Pi 3.21 installed. The next thing to do is to see whether it actually works. All you have to do to run it is simply to come up here and double click. And um, it comes up with the um, screen, splash screen. You see 3.2.1 beta. As soon as it's a non-beta, I will be uh, releasing this uh, deb and uh, just adjusting it to for the, the final version. And uh, it takes a bit of time just to get going. And then we will come up with the screen for Sonic Pi, which comes up now. And that is the welcome screen you get for a brand new installation of Sonic Pi. If you've already used the other one, uh, then you might not get this screen. It would just go up and have show any program which you uh, last had in the relevant buffer. But if it's a brand new install and you've not run the other Sonic Pi, that's what you would see. So we'll simply close the welcome screen there. And at the moment, we've got a white screen here, um, and we've got down here the help screen at the bottom. I actually find it easier to read um, if it's um, a black screen with white writing on it. And we can do that. We can go to the preference menu here, and we can simply come to the editor section. And uh, we've got uh, either a light screen or a dark screen. <coughs> That's with the same icons up at the top there. Or there's um, a couple of other ones down here, um, a pro light and pro dark one, which is the same thing, except it uses slightly smaller icons and therefore it's not quite as um, um, pronounced up at the top there, the icons for the different sections. There is also another one, um, which is a high contrast one, which is of use if you are visually impaired and you want to use a screen reader. These will now work pretty well with um, Sonic Pi 2.3.1. But we'll go back for the moment to the ProDark screen, which is there. While we're here, we can look at uh, a couple of other um, new features. First of all, if we go to the I.O. tab there, you can see that unlike the version of 3.1, which is installed in Raspbian, normally there, the MIDI port section is completely blank because it doesn't have the supporting code to run MIDI um, in that um, package. But here we can see that we've got a couple of um, 
MIDI ports available, um, MIDI port through port zero, and one from QJack CTL, which is running up here. And we've got one um, output port, MIDI through port zero, so that we can use that to drive um, a synthesizers running on the same machine or indeed externally. And if I was to plug in um, a USB keyboard, um, 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 a MIDI keyboard, then that would actually appear as a, an additional output uh, in, uh, input here, and we could use that to actually play programs on Sonic Pi, and I've done that many times. The other thing is we've got the OSC server. This will receive messages either from uh, other programs running on the Raspberry Pi, which use this protocol, or Sonic Pi can itself send OSC messages either to those programs, or if we click this, uh, we can send messages to external um, programs. And this is one way that you can actually get several versions of Sonic Pi to run together uh, as a mini orchestra, which is again another project which I've done. So uh, the other thing that we can see which is new um, is if we go to the visual screen here, this is the one which controls the scopes or the visual display of the waveforms which are being generated by Sonic Pi. And previously we had Lissajou, um, mirror, uh, we had Lissajou, Mono and Stereo for the available versions. We've got two new ones, Spectrum, which is now the default, and Mirror Stereo. We'll see those operating in a minute when I run a program. Also, the there is a transparency slider now, and this actually works on um, this version of Sonic 5. I've added the code to support it. Um, previously, this was um, not available, this slider, because it wouldn't work on uh, Raspbian. But it does now, and you can see that if I slide that up, we slowly reveal the screen behind. And this is quite nice if you want to run a visual display uh, behind your Sonic Pi while you're actually playing, and this can be done. Uh, it can be a bit tricky to set up, but again, other projects which I have done utilize this. So we'll take the transparency down for the moment, and before we actually um, start the recording, I need to come back to the um, connection part of Jack uh, Audio Connection Kit, because uh, Sonic Pi at the moment is set up so that the Super Collider synth, which produces the sounds from Sonic Pi, is connected to the system output. In other words, to the loudspeaker, um, which is connected to, or earphones in my case, which is connected to uh, my Pi 4. But I also want to be able to record this in the simple screen recorder, so I need to put an extra connection in from Super Collider across to the simple screen recorder, like that. Um, that's actually expanded, so you can see that um, if I expand it, there's a, a left and a right um, input, and there's a left and a right output, or output one and a two, which you can see there, and they are connected across there. For the um, microphone, I've only got a mono microphone, so I've connected that to both channels of the uh, smart recorder, so that you actually hear me, um, uh, and both left and right speakers are not just on one of them. So that's all done now, so we can actually minimize that, and we're ready to start this playing. Let's just get rid of the preference screen, and we'll start with a little program here. Uh, we could actually get rid of the, uh, the help screen as well, I think, which we don't actually need at the moment. And we can get rid of that, and we can come up here, and I'm going to type into this first buffer uh, a simple program. And because I'm lazy, I'm going to get Sonic Pi to do it for me and use one of the built-in examples. So I'm just simply going to type the word load. And as soon as I do that, we get a pop-up menu of all the possibilities that Sonic Pi knows about. I'm going to choose the second one, which is load example. And we'll click on that, and it puts it in for me. And then I'm going to type a space. And because it knows that load example means load one of the uh, examples which uh, Sonic Pi knows about, it produces a list of them down here. And you can see all of them down there, one under the other, quite a lot of them. I'm going to choose one which is quite nice and noisy called Compass Beats. So I'm going to double click on that, and that puts that in. And that is a one line program in Sonic Pi that says load the example Compass Beats. So if we were to run that, which we can do by clicking on the arrowhead here, it actually does that. It loads in the code for this particular 
program. You can see it's not particularly long. It um, uses um, a particular um, tempo, which is um, set adjusted by the loop campus, which we're going to use in this. And then there's two little live loops, uh, this one here and then this one here. And they're going to play together. So this is the moment of truth whether we see whether it all works. So let's do three, two, one, go. And indeed it does. And you can see the lovely new um, scope there showing the distribution of frequencies as it plays. And you can see the log down the bottom showing that this is working. So we'll stop that running. And that completes our introduction to the new Sonic Pi 3.2.1 beta at the moment but soon to be release version at which stage you'll be able to get your hands on this and try it out yourselves on a Pi 4. Thank you very much for watching and I'll just come up here and we will uh, save that recording.